You know, like most of you watching, I've always had dreams and ambitions of being a millionaire. And I remember two years ago when I first started this channel, I was broke. And I was very transparent about where I was financially. I keep telling myself, well, maybe I should wait until I'm a millionaire. Because if I'm a millionaire, then people would value my information more. They would they would believe me, they would trust me more. But a lot has changed in the past two years since I made that video. You see, because now I am officially a millionaire. I've got over $500,000 worth of Apple stock and some other smaller positions in broad market ETFs, three different savings accounts, two of them with $250,000 in them each, and another one with a little bit over $300,000. I've got a little over $100,000 in equity between all of my different real estate properties and around $40,000 in other alternative alternative assets, all totaling over $1.4 million. Now, I know you're probably wondering, but Joshua, how exactly did you get all of this money? And I could sit here all day and tell you about all the businesses that I started and like what exactly I did to make this money. But honestly, all the practical advice in the world, which I could give it to you, but all of that still isn't nearly as important as what I'm going to share with you instead in this video. You know, growing up poor, living in low income housing in Detroit, Michigan, there are no opportunities. Everyone's kind of left to their own devices and what ends up happening is people either become stuck in these super dead end jobs for the rest of their lives or they end up in prison or somewhere else even worse. And so when my mom moved us out of Detroit when I was about 13, we ended up moving into a trailer park at the very edge of this super wealthy town called Lake Orion. And Lake Orion was the exact exact opposite of Detroit. All of my friends in Lake Orion had extremely wealthy and ambitious parents. They were CEOs and CFOs and business owners and such. And in contrast, all of my friends in Detroit had very poor parents who had no ambition whatsoever. And growing up in these two different polar opposite environments allowed me to see the world from two different perspectives. And this let me see firsthand the difference between how a rich person views the world and how a poor person views the world. And how ultimately, becoming rich or staying poor comes down to just a few small things. And so in this video, I want to talk with you about what those few small things actually are. And all of the things that I'm going to share with you in this video have directly contributed to me becoming a millionaire. And so now I want to share them with you. And so the first thing that contributed to me becoming a millionaire is developing clarity. You see, most people never get what they want out of life because they don't actually really know what they want out of life, right? They'll say things like, I want more money, more free time, uh, more success, whatever, right? But the problem with all of these things is that they're way too vague. If you want to become a millionaire, you have to get extremely specific and clear on why you want to become a millionaire. Let me give you a real life example that's extremely personal to me, okay? So growing up, my childhood was pretty dark, like metaphorically speaking. And I remember that Christmas time was always my favorite time of year because it was the one time of year where things just kind of of felt like bright and good. And so as I grew up, I began, you know, working different jobs and stuff. And there was this one job in particular that always got these front gate magazines in during the holiday season. And in this magazine, they always had some of the prettiest Christmas trees that you'll ever see. And I used to look through these Christmas trees all the time. Something about them just felt like wealth to me. Like the only people truly buying these big expensive Christmas trees were wealthy people. And so eventually it became a goal of mine to be able to buy one of these trees one day. Now, here's the thing, okay? These Christmas trees in this magazine were these huge, like nine to 15 foot trees. And so in order to actually fit one of these trees in a house, it meant that you kind of had to have a large house with like big vaulted ceilings. And so because it was my goal to be able to buy one of these big Christmas trees one day, inherently, it also became a goal to make a lot of money so that I could buy a big house to then put my big Christmas tree inside of my big house. And guess what? This year, I'm buying one of those big front gate style Christmas trees to put into my new house, which does have big vaulted ceilings. You see, I truly believe that if my goal was just to make a lot of money for the sake of having a lot of money, I truly believe that I wouldn't be sitting here right now with a net worth of over $1.4 million. I believe that it was my clear desire to be able to buy one of these big Christmas trees one day. That's what really drove me and gave me the ambition to go then make a lot of money. You see, because that desire and that goal 
was extremely personal to me and it was very emotional. Simply saying I want to make a lot of money doesn't actually connect with you on an emotional level and therefore it's going to be almost impossible for you to actually take action on that goal. And so you have to gain clarity and get much more specific on why you want to actually become a millionaire. My recommendation is just to make sure that your reason is extremely personal to you, right? Like perhaps you want to be able to afford to buy your mom a house one day or something. Like whatever it is, just make sure that your goal is extremely personal to you, kind of like with my Christmas tree example. But when you do this, you'll be really surprised with how much quicker money just kind of starts to flow into your life because you'll actually be motivated to take action. And when money starts flowing into your life, it'll be a good time to consider downloading Cash App. In case you haven't heard, Cash App is revolutionizing the way that we buy and sell Bitcoin. The app is super easy to use and they've made it truly accessible to everyone. And here are just some of the things you can do with Cash App. For starters, you can buy Bitcoin for as little as $1. You can also send Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network or gift Bitcoin to your friends and family directly through the app. You can also auto invest your spare change through roundups when using your cash card. Another great feature is the Lightning Network. Cash App is the first public company to support the Lightning Network, which makes it possible to send and receive Bitcoin completely free and instantly using personalized QR codes. But my favorite feature is the auto buy option, which allows you to dollar cost average into Bitcoin on an automated schedule. And this means you don't have to try and time the market. Now you can also set it up so that a portion of every paycheck that you receive is automatically invested into Bitcoin, which is a pretty cool feature too. So, hey, if you'd like to start investing in Bitcoin, Cash App has made it super simple to do so. Just be sure to click on my link down below and thank you so much Cash App for sponsoring this portion of the video. But the next thing that contributed to me becoming a millionaire is increasing my self-esteem. Most people will never accomplish anything significant in life because they have a very low self-esteem. For example, growing up in Detroit, my best friend's dad would always say things to us like, boys, uh, people like us just aren't meant to be rich. Something else he used to always say was, you're either born rich or you get lucky. That's the only way that anybody can become a millionaire. And the only reason my best friend's dad was saying this was because he had a low self-esteem, especially when it came to money. And because he lacked the confidence about who he was and what he could accomplish, he would often project that onto everyone else. And that was actually the exact opposite of how my rich friend's dad was. I was at their house one time, just like playing Xbox or whatever, and he asked me, he said, Joshua, what exactly is it that you wanna do with your life? And I was like 15 at the time, and I said to him, sir, honestly, I don't really know. Like, I know that I might wanna start a business one day, like maybe like a clothing brand or something like that, but honestly, I don't think I'm smart enough to be able to do that. And when I said that to him, he stopped and looked at me, and I'll never forget what he told me. He said, Joshua, if an eagle was raised by chickens, it'll live its whole life believing that it can't fly. Obviously, we all know that eagles can fly, right? On the other hand, chickens can't fly. And so if an eagle was born and raised and is only around these non-flying chickens, then that eagle will have a very low self-esteem when it comes to flying because he doesn't really know any better, right? Like his eagle mom was never there to teach him how to fly. He, he was only around these chickens who don't know how to fly. And likewise, most of us are not born into wealthy families. And so when it comes to money and like building wealth, most of us have a very low self-esteem when it comes to money. But here's the thing, okay? Just like the eagle could fly if he really wanted to, if he just simply believed and then tried, you too can make a lot of money, you know, become wealthy, become a millionaire if you simply believed that it was possible and then started trying. And that actually brings me to the next thing that contributed to me becoming a millionaire, which is that I simply started believing that it was possible and my actions followed thereafter. Your beliefs on whether you can or cannot do something directly dictate how much action you take on that belief. For the longest time, I genuinely believed that it was possible for me to become a millionaire, right? And so because I believed that it was possible, I was much more willing to take action on what I already believed was possible. And here's a funny thing about that. When you believe something is possible, you'll take action on it. And when you take action, you get results. And then those results give you confidence, which feeds back into your beliefs about achieving that thing. And so when I started my first like real business at 19, 
19 years old, I only started that business because I believed that it was possible to become a millionaire, therefore I had the confidence to go and try. And because I took the risk and started that business, I got to see some results, right? I was able to make a little bit of money. And because I made a little bit of money, my beliefs about being able to start a business and make money with it were further reinforced. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, but Joshua, how can I simply believe that it's possible to become a millionaire if I truly don't believe that I can? There's this incredible phenomenon called uh, the crab in a bucket mentality, and it's based on a real thing. So if you have a bucket full of crabs, what ends up happening is all of the crabs are trying to escape from the bucket, right, naturally. And so as one crab tries to climb out, all of the other crabs that are still stuck at the bottom of the bucket will start pulling that one crab who's about to climb out back into the bucket. And so what ends up happening is none of the crabs can ever escape because they all keep pulling each other back down into the bucket. And so my theory is that if you truly believe that it's not possible for you to become a millionaire and just be successful, then I believe that you are a victim of being a crab in a bucket. You're surrounding yourself with people and just information in general that's not improving your life, right? It's pulling you back down into the bucket. And so to fix this, you need to surround yourself with better people and better information. Stop watching the news, stop hanging around friends who don't want to do anything with their lives, and instead surround yourself with good information and good people who are going to help to pull you out of the bucket instead of trying to pull you back into the bucket. Now, the very last thing that contributed to me becoming a millionaire, and this one is extremely important, is simply not giving up. Like, you can't stop. So there's a true story about a man back during the Colorado gold rush, and this guy was one of the first miners to begin mining for gold in Colorado. And he found a little bit of gold here and there, but not much. And so after a few months with very little success, he decided to sell all of his gold mining equipment to some junk man for a fraction of the price that he paid for it. So then this junk man began digging for gold where the previous miner had left off. And on the very first day of digging, within like one hour of digging, he ended up hitting the largest gold mine in history. And the gold mine was literally only three feet away from where the previous miner had given up at. You see, a lot of people, when they start a new business or a new YouTube channel or a podcast or whatever, they end up quitting that thing way, way too soon. And the problem with this, the problem with stopping too soon is that you never give yourself time to actually start seeing real results. And what I mean by this is, for example, I've spent the last eight years of my life trying to build a successful business and become a millionaire. And eight years is a very long time. Most people give up on something new within the first few weeks, sometimes the first few months. But the reason that I like metaphorically struck gold was because I just kept digging. Even when I was only seeing dirt and rocks and just like a bunch of useless things, I still kept digging, right? Starting new businesses, trying new things, constantly learning new skills, I just kept digging. And then, because I didn't give up, I just kept digging past all the useless rocks and dirt, I eventually struck gold. You know, I can't even begin to tell you how many people I see go and start like a new YouTube channel and within the first, you know, five to 10 videos, they'll quit, right? Or they go and start a podcast and they'll post three episodes and then they'll quit. Or they'll start like a new business or side hustle and within the first two weeks, they'll stop doing it. Way too many people are quitting and giving up on their dreams when they're just three feet away from gold. And so one of the most important pieces of advice that I can give you when it comes to becoming a millionaire, if that's your goal, if that's what you want, you just have to keep digging. Like you can't stop digging. Just keep going until you finally hit the gold. And I promise you, if you don't stop, eventually you will find it. Hey, you're amazing. And I appreciate you so much for being here. I mean that. Don't ever forget, you can accomplish anything you want in this life. I'm watching you. I believe in you. And as always, I'll see you again very soon. Take care.